Well, good afternoon and thanks for having us in. The Senate Select Committee is expected to begin meeting at any moment. They're taking the next step in deciding the fate of suspended Senator Julie Fry Mueller. Here is a live look at the room where they will be meeting. The committee met last night and recommended that the a Rapid City Republican be censured by the whole Senate and that her suspension should also be lifted. We are monitoring the situation and will keep you updated as the meeting unfolds. New this midday, we have an update on a child porn case involving a former Aurora County Sheriff's deputy. David Suarez was sentenced to five years suspended on one count of possession of child pornography, meaning he won't go to prison. As part of the sentence, he will spend three years on probation and have to pay court fees. According to online court records, Suarez pleaded guilty to the one charge in November as part of the plea deal. Several other charges were dismissed. A Sioux Falls murder trial has wrapped up and the jury has acquitted the suspect of the most serious crimes. Yesterday, jurors found Ryan Odland not guilty of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, and manslaughter. The jury only convicted him of possessing a gun after being convicted of a violent crime. This midday, he remains in the Minnehaha County Jail awaiting sentencing this afternoon. Now, the case goes back to October of 2020. That's when Sioux Falls police were called to a gas station at 57th and Marion for a report of a crash. When they got there, they discovered 36-year-old Clay Stubbs had been shot twice. Police say... Uh, he met Odland and Lowell Loberg for a drug deal. Loberg has uh, pleaded guilty to being an accessory to homicide as part of a plea deal. Loberg is scheduled to be sentenced next month. Also new this midday, Sioux Falls man is behind bars accused of two robberies that happened yesterday afternoon. The first was reported just after 2 p.m. at the Lucky Lady Casino near 11th and Summit, just west of downtown. Police say a man walked in showed a knife, and tried to get cash. He ended up leaving without any money. The second robbery happened about two hours later, just a few blocks west at the Come and Go at 11th and Grange. In this case, a man also walked in with a knife. He got some cash and took off. Police were able to get a description of the robber from witnesses and surveillance video. 41-year-old James Ball was arrested late last night in the area of the Lucky Lady Casino. Ball is charged with robbery and aggravated assault. Turning now to a look at your first uh, your midday uh, forecast with a Brian Carstens. And you said a cold front was moving in, Brian. That does not sound good. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow we'll have to deal with that again. But today, at least the sunshine, I think always a major help, isn't it? Uh, especially now that we're into February and that power of the sun in February. It's a bigger deal now, too. 12 degrees currently in Aberdeen. So well, we're slowly ticking upward. A lot of snow, of course, on the ground here, too. As we look live at Rapid City, winds are calm, but the temperature is a little warmer at 30 degrees right now and sunshine as well. How about Sioux Falls? Well, we've jumped a little bit now. We're up to 15, counting every degree. South wind at about five miles per hour. Okay, so rest of the temperatures at midday, 19 degrees Yankton, 14 Mitchell. Over in Worthington, we're at 13 now, Spencer 13. Folks in the far northwest, they're a little bit warmer, 29 in Buffalo, 25 in Faith, and 25 degrees in Mobridge. Now the winds overall, most of these numbers about 5 to 15 miles per hour. A little bit more of a breeze in Worthington. But by and large today, we'll just try to work on yeah, seeing how mild we can get. If we can get above 32, I'll be pretty happy with that in Pier Rapid City. Of course, we've got to get a little wind to work in our favor here. It doesn't take much, but we've got to get at least 5 to 15 and we can get a little over 40. Again tomorrow, a cool down. We'll talk about that and then we're going to get you set up for some melting <laughs> this weekend. That story all ahead in a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Brian. Well, there is one benefit to our snowy winter in Kelloland. There's plenty of snow within reach of a shovel to build an outdoor shelter called a Quincy. We asked the outdoor campus in Sioux Falls to build us a Quincy in case you want to try a construction project in your own yard. I've got one in my backyard. Uh, and it took me and my four-year-old daughter probably about three hours to make the mound. Uh, we let it sit for a day, and then it took another two hours to dig, dig out. When I was a kid, we called them snow forts, but Quincy's are popular shelters for winter camping. We put the outdoor campuses Quincy to the test to see just how sturdy it is. That's in tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. 
Well, the fastest competitors at this weekend's Sioux Falls Stampede game will be sporting four legs. The hockey franchise will transform into the Sioux Falls Fighting Wiener Dogs, hosting races during the first and uh, second intermissions. Yeah, the team will also wear and auction off specialty jerseys to benefit Dakota Docks and Rescue. They don't have a big shelter, you know, it's all individuals that uh, take in these dogs and, um, you know, the money that is raised is going to go help uh, cover a lot of the vet costs. A lot of the dogs that they bring in, you know, uh, need surgeries or need some sort of medical attention and uh, anyone who owns an animal knows that that's not cheap. The fighting wiener dogs. <laughs> we'll hear from the founder of the Dakota Docks and Rescue about the significance of Saturday's game. That's tonight on Kelloland News. NFL quarterback Tom Brady has announced his retirement. He posted the announcement on social media in a brief video lasting just under a minute. He says this time it's for good. He says the most successful quarterback in NFL history and one of the greatest athletes in the team of sports. Funeral services are being held today for Tyree Nichols, the 29-year-old Memphis man who died last month, three days after he was stopped by police and brutally beaten. Jared Hill is in Memphis with the latest. In the bitter cold, mourners made their way to Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis to say a final goodbye to Tyree Nichols amid calls for police reform. We want that to be done right now. Duty to de-escalate, duty to intervene, duty to render aid, and a duty to be decent. Yeah. You don't have to be trained to be a decent human being. Yeah. Last night, family and friends of the 29-year-old dad who loved to skateboard said they're focused on celebrating his life even as they continue to fight for justice. My little brother didn't deserve none of this. Parts of the South, including here in Memphis, are covered under a sheet of ice, causing travel delays, which in turn delayed Nichols' funeral by a few hours. Vice President Kamala Harris was among those delayed. Nichols' funeral follows revelations that four of the five fired Memphis police officers facing murder charges for his death had been reprimanded or suspended in the past. Anyone with a suspension record like that should certainly not have been on the force, certainly not on an elite force. The Memphis Police Department says it will release more audio and video of the violent encounter after its investigation concludes in the coming weeks. Jared Hill, CBS News. Memphis. In addition to the five officers facing murder charges, two other officers have been relieved of duty pending investigation, and three fire department employees were fired for not following policies and protocols.